welcome to this uh, session. In the last class we were looking at uh, break even analysis, the experience curve, how it is useful in the manufacturing scenario. Just to refurbish whatever we have done, this break even analysis can be put in terms of a few equations. The total cost with respect to any product can be written down as fixed cost plus variable cost multiplied by the quantity. The total revenue that you get can be written down as price for the product that you are charging that is the company is charging multiplied by the quantity sold. A simple this thing is at break even point the total revenue should be equal to the total cost. So, the price that is charged at break even point that is P multiplied by quantity of break even should be equal to F C plus V C variable cost multiplied by quantity of break even. So, this quantity of break even can be put down as fixed cost divided by P minus V C, where P minus V C refers to the unit contribution with respect to the product. So, this is the way that break even analysis we discussed. Now, we also discussed in the last class some aspects about sensitivity analysis. What is the sensitivity analysis? We found that suppose we increase the variable cost, it has got marked effect on the break even point. So, when it when it has got marked effect on the break even point, what is the type of uh, end result that you are going to get? The end result that you are going to get is it eats up the profits. Decrease in variable costs improves profitability that is why the concept of the way experience curve. Suppose you are having experience to, to produce the same product over and over again. This is what happens in a manufacturing scenario. After several trials, the worker would have achieved a certain level of experience that is where we said suppose he is operating on the 80 percent experience curve at 2 units suppose this is the cost, suppose we increase the production by 4 this will be the cost. So, that is the way we looked at in the experience curve, but the cost cannot come down to a very large extent that also we saw when we said when he goes up when on the 80 percent curve if he goes up to 16 if he is able to produce up to 16 units then the way the whole this cost per unit will come down to 51. So, this is where experience is very useful in the manufacturing shop scenario. The, the, this is where if you are in a private sector the company goads you to keep on producing more and more units and it offers the worker also some incentives when he produces more units. This is also the handicap of the public sector units. Suppose the what do you call a worker who is very good let us say he produces more number of units than a worker who is an ordinary worker let us say. The manager cannot give this good worker extra incentives both of them will get the same incentives. So, it is uh, what do you call 
a, a race horse and a stationary horse type of scenario. Okay. A race horse goes very fast, a, what do you call and a stationary horse moves like a tonga. So, this is a, this is a, this is the similar scenario which you have in the public sector units in most of them. So, this also uh, adds uh, this also acts like a decent in incentive for the worker. Oh, what is a good even if I produce 10 units also I get the same this thing, even if I produce 1 unit also I get the same thing. So, this is, these are some of the issues which public sector has to address in order to compete in this global scenario. Okay. How to overcome these uh, disadvantages? So, the manager should be given discretionary powers to award an incentive or some other method by which this uh, good worker is recognized in the shop floor. So, this is essential for the survival of the public sector, especially the manufacturing sector. So, this is what is uh, what has been observed after the public sector units were open to competition right from 1984 onwards. So, we, we have seen that so many handicaps the managers in the public sector units are facing. I just listed one of them. Okay. So, when you look at the sensitivity analysis with respect to break even point, so it can be with respect to fixed costs, variable costs and or price. So, decrease in fixed costs results in decrease in break even point. So, if you can reduce the fixed costs then the break even point is likely to come down, but it is a difficult task. Profitability at a particular volume of production improves with lower fixed costs. So, companies always look at the variable cost component. Suppose, the variable cost if you are able to reduce it improves profitability also this is where this experience curve becomes useful. So, increase in permissible price break even point comes down and vice versa at a particular volume of production profitability improves price is the most sensitive instrument followed by variable cost and fixed cost. So, these are some things which uh, as a manager on the shop floor, you have to keep your eyes and ears open on how the cost is really increasing or decreasing, because at the end of the day, you will be looking at the type of break even point figures and that is where it impinges on the company. Suppose, you are not looking at a break uh, linear break even analysis. The points that we mentioned till now applicable to the linear break even analysis, the equations which we discussed and all that. Suppose, it is non linear, it may happen sometimes. When does it happen? When prices may be consciously reduced to gain additional sales volume and market share or in response to competitors action. So, this is where the rules of break even analysis may not hold good. Okay. So, this we will discuss in this uh, in a few minutes from now with respect to this doom loops. So, what are the assumptions that you are making? Fixed cost is fixed for all production volumes. So, sometimes unrealistic with respect to break even analysis. Some then variable costs do not fall with increasing level of production, not true that is where the experience curve is very helpful. 
total costs and total revenue vary in linear relationship with output. So, may not uh, really vary always linearly sometimes you may have non-linear relationships also. Maximize profit before interest and tax is the desirable business objective. So, many times uh, this is the usual objective of any business unit. What does a business unit want? At least in the present day context, if you look at it, it wants to maximize its profit. If it does, if it is not able to maximize its profit it is at a great disadvantage in the marketplace. So, given this type of a scenario, some of the things which we just discussed, though at the cost of repetition, price is the most sensitive instrument for improving break even point. So, increase in permissible price break even point comes down and vice versa. So, followed by variable cost and fixed cost. So, price followed by variable costs and fixed costs can have a can impinge on the break even point. Now, a few points before we go to doom's loop. We discussed all this with respect to this experience curve. So, if you see this experience curve relationship is a good framework for marginal considerations for predict, pre predicting industrial scenario. So, with respect to future costs, profit margins and corresponding cash flows for own and competitors operations. So, this is where an analysis wing will be there in many of the manufacturing companies. So, if company X is manufacturing a product let us say A, company Y also manufacturing the same product A, this analysis wing of A, X will be looking at how what is the type of costs that are being incurred in the by the competitor. So, this analysis keeps on going on a continuous scale. Now, if you look at how experience curve has been useful, it has been very useful in markets like the PC market. Giving you some insights that is the implications a few large plants with standardized productions would be able to supply global marketing efforts. Global markets, marketing efforts should be fully coordinated with manufacturing plants in lowering prices should not be with inferior quality. So, at the suppose you say I want to lower the price and the quality also will come down then it is not a good thing to do for a company. So, you should always give keep a very sensitive eye on quality. The quality of the product should always be held very dear to the company. So, this is what is happening with respect to so many consumer uh, consumer products which are put out in the present day Indian market. I will give you some a, a very simple example. There are so many tawas which are put out by different brands of companies. Some of them are local brands, some of them are uh, well known brands. Now, what is the catch for the housewife? The catch for the housewife as always has been the price. So, the local brands price their product at a much lower rate saying that at this price itself we can give you the same type of products as being produced by the 
well known brands or the well known companies. Now, when the product is actually put to use, I took this example of this tawa for the simple reason. We want, in fact, we did a very small market research on this. How is the tawa which is made by these local companies faring in the actual scenario? So, when we look, when we got the feedback from the housewives, more than 75 percent of them were not satisfied, were not happy with this local tawa. What is the reason? They were giving so many examples. Suppose, they put the dosa on that tawa, the dosa floor itself gets stuck to the tawa, which does not happen with a brand let us say like prestige, where it can be easily taken. So, this is a type of scenario. So, lowering the price should not be at the cost of the quality of the product. Okay. So, this uh, experience curve relationships they also have some limitations. How do you determine the cost? This is uh, this has been a question. So, should we take this element into account or should we delete this element? So, many things come into being and those are uh, fine points of the experience curve. Data regarding competitors very difficult to get. So, a lot of market intelligence has to be done. A late market entrance has to operate at lower initial prices to survive. So, if you are a late entrant, so in the marketing this thing we always say even the second byte is app, uh, second byte in the market is also of the apple is enough is attractive enough. So, do not always look at being the prime mover in the market that is the first mover. Even if you are a second mover also, the second bite of the apple is good enough that is what we say. But more and more players into the market you may find when you are a late entrant into that market space. So, you may have to operate at lower initial prices to survive. When you have to operate at lower initial prices, you may find that you are not breaking even also many times. This has been the experience of uh, many small and medium scale industries in and around Bangalore. So, so many well known brands competing with these uh, SMEs. MSMEs. So, result is MSMEs under lot of stress to decrease the price of the product, to move the product in the marketplace, then in the bargain getting stuck with so many problems. The worst problem they face is the working capital. Okay. So, these are things which are inevitable in a competitive market. So, you must you must find out in your own way, how do you really get over that? Okay. Now, with all this we look at one doom loops. What is this doom loop? We will illustrate it with a figure very shortly. These doom loops are a self reinforcing processes. What is this? It is it is like a whirlpool type of a scenario. So, you are really going round and round, but not able to come out of this similar to what do you call the chakra view scenario in the Mahabharat war. Drive an organization into cyclical situations from which an organization finds it difficult to extract itself. So, you get struck in this chakra view, difficult to come out of this chakra view. This doom loop is also similar to that, you get stuck in this doom loop, very difficult to extricate yourself from that. It is like a vortex, it keeps drawing you down only, not allowing you to go up. To avoid getting into a doom loop, it is required to constantly upgrade the products 
services and efficiency of distribution channels. So, what does it mean? It means that uh, in order to get into this, uh, in order to avoid getting into this trap, you should keep on upgrading your products. What do you mean keep on upgrading your products? That is you must and should concentrate on innovation. So, keep this innovation in an organization should be a continuous process. You came out with a product then do not sleep after this product is introduced into the market, because there are so many competitors who will duplicate the product in a very short time. So, you must constantly innovate, so that this competitor will find it difficult to copy the product. To get out of a doom loop, refocus on small business units and a change has to be brought about in the firm's culture. What do you mean? Suppose uh, you introduce a, you mean by you, by you meaning the company introduces a product, the competitor also comes out with a product, then the market thinks that the competitor's product is better than the company's product, then the employees of the company think that they can also do better than the competitor but for that investment is required and you are not able to invest, then it will be looked down that is the company will be looked down, it will be a disadvantage for the company, because you are getting stuck. The morale of the employees will come down. All this is uh, presented by this figure. Okay. This figure is also available to you in the book on strategic management, but anyhow we will try to explain this figure. What see what happens? Firm cuts its price to hold on to the market share. So, you have a let us say the firm had certain percentage of the market share. Competitors have come into the marketplace and they are eating into the company's market share. When they are eating into the company's market share, how to keep them at bay? So, the firm has to act. So, it takes the best method of acting, the best sensitive instrument in the market. So, price is the best sensitive instrument. So, the firm tries to cut down the price in order to hold on to its market share, not allow the competitor to run away. Now, what does the competitor do? The competitor matches the company's price that is you reduced it by say x, he may reduce it by x or even x minus delta x. So, that might be lower than the company's product and yet is profitable. What does it mean? He may be operating at a higher level of experience curve than you. His experience curve relationship might be really turning out to be an advantage and in addition he may be innovating and developing better products at a lower cost. So, he may be paying lot of attention to product innovation, which you as a company may not be doing. Now, what happens? What will be the result of all this? Company competitor gains market share at the firm's expense. So, the market share of the company comes down the market share of the competitor goes up, the company gets trapped in this uh, doom sloop. Now, in order to get out of this loop, the, the firm also has to in uh, innovate. If it does not innovate, then it is likely to be pushed out of the market that is also happening with respect to MSMEs. 
Now, in order to innovate the company requires reinvestment. This reinvestment is possible provided the company has got good margin. If it does not have good margin that is the profit margins or the reserves many times MSMEs do not have great reserves. So, then even if the employees are willing to innovate the firm is not able to give them the adequate support saying that okay, you also start looking at how the product innovation can be done. Now, when you are not able to innovate in the marketplace, the employees become demoralized because the company is not able to support this uh, innovation drive. Now, what happens in the ultimate analysis? The quality of the product and the services become poor. So, this is uh, what we found especially in the covid period where you found that many of the msmes in addition to the usual problems they found that the market response to products was very very poor that is you even if you come out with a good product also the market was not responding with the same the thrust which it was doing earlier that is pre covid period so, in order to push the product, you have to reduce the price. Reducing the price involved so many things. So, all this contributed to a great hit that the MSMEs took in the COVID period with respect to economy. So, this is the doom sloop. It is like a vortex where if the firm gets stuck there, it is very difficult for the firm to extricate itself from this doom loop. Here we look at what are the important issues involved in corporate strategy. Some of the main issues that are involved to give a proper orientation to the company towards corporate strategy, towards formulating a corporate strategy or growth, stability or retrenchment. So, due to this liberalization process so many changes have taken place in so many industries. And especially after this COVID-19, you find that many people have lost their jobs also. The reasons might be manifold, maybe the projects got dried up for the company. So, the company felt that there was no way this workforce could be engaged. So, whichever whatever might be the reason. So, an IT company especially has to keep on evaluating its strategy continuously in the present day context. So, the point that comes out is what is going to be the growth of the company, will it be stable? Should, should we go in for retrenchment of employees all those types of issues. This is referred as directional strategy. So, this when you address these issues you are giving a direction to the organization. Then, before we take up serious issues that is a company takes up serious issues of retrenchment of employees, it keeps on evaluating its options. 
should they be retrenched or not retrenched? Can we continue their services? All those types of issues. So, in order to do that, the company starts evaluating its products or business units. So, what is the type of products or business units the company is in and how is the market reacting to that? This is what is called portfolio strategy. So, when you are looking at different portfolios of the company, then you have to provide a strategic direction to each of these business units. A business unit might be having several product lines. Each product line might be having different products also that is the different versions of the product. What exactly do we do in a portfolio strategy? We will discuss very shortly. Then the third aspect of this corporate strategy refers to activity coordination and transfer of resources for achieving capabilities among product lines and business units. This is referred to as parenting strategy. So, you have to coordinate the activities and the resource transfer across different business units. A company might be having several business units as I told you and each business unit might be having several product lines. So, at the company level all these business units have to be provided with a parenting strategy. These business units are treated like children and the company as the parent. So, they do this and why do we do all this? The main reason for doing all this is to get relative cost advantage with respect to products and product lines and also to devise a competitive strategy in the marketplace. So, as I have told you in the previous sessions, competitive strategy can come to a company basically out of the core competencies of the firm. So, from the core competencies of the firm you have to develop the competitive strategy that is a company has to come out with the competitive strategy. If the competitive strategy were to sustain for a reasonably long period in the marketplace, then it becomes a distinctive competence or for the company. So, that is what we were discussing with respect to this company Gillette and its product MASH 3. I can give one or two examples from the Indian context on this. The example that I have taken is that of Modi tires. Initially entered largest product segment that is truck with latest technology and lower prices. The caption that the company adopted was good value for money. Subsequently matched the market leader's price and displaced him by capturing higher market shares. This is also we have discussed this also in the earlier classes when a number 2 in the marketplace would like to become number 1. How does he become number 1? These are some of the strategies which the companies adopt. The second example that I wanted to give you is that of hero cycles. In order to get competitive advantage, 
and also to have cost advantage competitive strategy and also to have cost advantage in the marketplace what it did was dropped irrelevant product attributes. So, a company like hero cycles started subcontracting production of its parts. So, this production of its parts subcontracting and then dropping of these irrelevant product attributes has helped zero cycles even to this day. So, it is one of the sought after cycles in the Indian market. Now, when we want to do a portfolio analysis, what is it that we are guided by? These are some things which we are guided by. So, portfolio analysis looks at corporate investments in different products or industries SBUs. So, SBU stands for a strategic business unit. And when you are looking at investments in different products or industries, you have to do a fine balancing act. This fine balancing act can be with respect to net cash flow, state of development and the risk. What do we mean by net cash flow? So, how much is the money that is flowing into the company? may be through sales revenues or whatever other income all those types of things. Then what is it that is going out and what is remaining as net? So, this is uh, this constitutes as we have discussed earlier also a very strong point towards the health of the company. The higher the reserve of the company the better is the health of the company. So, that is where we were discussing some of the IT companies like Infosys, where its reserve position is very good. So, it can take decisions on M and A that is mergers and acquisitions without having to source external cash flow, because the reserve position is very strong. The second is the state of development. With respect to an SPU, a particular product might be a niche product or being introduced for the first time. Then how do we go about balancing this? So, when you are having a product introduction, it is always accompanied by teething problems you have to work very hard to move this product in the BCG matrix, which we will discuss very shortly from the quadrant of question marks to stars. So, when you are in the question marks, you do not know what is going to be the future of this uh, particular product. So, there you have to show all your capabilities to see whether these question marks can move to stars with respect to this product or the product line. Then in the present day context, what you are seeing is many of the Indian firms are wary of taking risk. This attitude has to change, but now we are seeing changes happening on this level also. So, whatever might be some of the negative points as an entrepreneur, as a firm, the company should be willing to take risks. So, this risk taking ability many times invariably will pay off. So, this is what has happened to many of the companies in the US also. There is no reason to think why it will not happen to Indian companies. It the results we are seeing of companies where they have taken risks also. 
many of the IT companies have come out well through this. In order to do all these uh, portfolios that is analysis of these portfolios, we make use of what is called the display matrices. We will be discussing in the coming classes some 5 display matrices. One is the BCG matrix, second is the G matrix or the McKenzie matrix, the third is the strategic planning institutes matrix that is the profit impact of market strategy PIMPs. The fourth is the Arthur D. Little companies matrix, the fifth is the hope Hofer's product or the market evaluation matrix. So, we will stop here, we will continue with the BCG matrix in the next class. Thank you.